Morning, my sister and brother, Brother Where are you? Trusting that you are doing well. Well, happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday. Well, right now there's a storm here. The power went out twice already. And so I was going to do something else, but it's like I've got to cut my time because I'm not sure about this power situation here. And it's a storm outside right now. I don't know if you can hear it. It's thundering and lightning. And so, nevertheless, it is still a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And we need the water, right? We need the water. We need the sun. And God is just cleaning the valley. So, thank you, Lord, for the rain. So, let us get into our topic, our devotion. And this is, E Shall Receive Power by Ellen G. White. Let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day, Father God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God. As the shower is pouring, Father God, we ask you to allow that shower to pour inside our heart. Cleanse us and mold us and shape us, Father God, into what you want us to be, Father God. We give you praise, honor, and glory. Right now, Father God, I ask you that you would decrease me, Father God, so that you'll be increased. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. I thank you, Father God. Through the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, so we are in, in, in unexpected ways. And it stayed here. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? And this is coming from Acts chapter 2, verse 12. Acts 2, verse 12. Father God, as we go into this topic, Father God, we ask you to take full control. Give us a lesson that we need today. I thank you for hearing. Thank you for answering through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And it stayed here, and I forgot my marker. My Let's see. Let me go over here and get something else. Hold on. And it stayed here. We are to pray for the impartation of the Spirit as the remedy for sin-sick souls. The church needs to be converted. Hey, Pat, how are you? Did your power went out, girl? So how are you today? Trusting that you are doing well. It says, church, the church needs to be converted. And why should we not prostrate ourselves at the throne of grace as representative of the church, and from a broken heart and contrite spirit, make earnest application that the Holy Spirit shall be poured out upon us from on high. Let us pray that when it shall be graciously bestowed, our cold hearts may be revived, and we may have discernment to understand that it is from God and receive it with joy. Some have treated the Spirit as an unwelcome guest, refusing to receive the rich gift, refusing to acknowledge it, turning from it, and condemning it as fanaticism. When the Holy Spirit works the human agent, it does not ask us in what way it shall operate. Often it moves in unexpected ways. Christ did not come as the Jews expected. He did not come in a manner to glorify them as a nation. His forerunner came to prepare the way for him by calling upon the people to repent of their sins and be converted and be baptized. And the forerunner of Jesus Christ was none uh, was John the Baptist. So let me repeat this. His forerunner came to prepare the way for him by calling upon the people to repent of their sins and be converted and be baptized. Christ's message was the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. This is coming from Mark 1, verse 15. Mark 1, verse 15. The Jews refused to receive Christ because he did not come in accordance with their expectation. The idea of finite men were held in infallible because they were 
arrayed with age, meaning they had a lot of gray white hair. Okay, gray, gray, white. So, so let me go back. It says the idea of finite men will hail as infallible because they were arrayed with age. This is the danger to which the church is now exposed that the inventions of the finite man shall mark out the, the precise way for the spirit to come. Though they would not care to acknowledge it, some have already done this. And because the spirit is to come, not to praise man or to build up their er erroneous theories, but to remove the world of sin, I'm sorry, but to reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, many turn away from him. The Holy Spirit flatters no man, neither does it work according to the devising of any man. Let me repeat this. The Holy Spirit flatters no man, neither does it work according to the devising of any man. One more time. The Holy Spirit flatters no man. Neither does it work according to the devising of any man. Finite sinful men are not to work the Holy Spirit. Finite and sinful, finite sinful men are not to work the Holy Spirit. When it shall come as the reprover through any human agents whom God shall chose, it is man's place to hear and obey its voice. Let me repeat this. When it shall come as the reprover, meaning that it's showing you your faults, through any human agent who God has chose, it is man's place to hear and obey its voice. So that concludes my devotion, my sister, my brother, in unexpected ways my sister and brother. So like I keep on saying, the Holy Spirit uses us. We do not use the Holy Spirit, okay? So a lot of false churches out there thinking that they can use the Holy Spirit and then you can pray, 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 and you can speak in tongues and all that stuff and thinking that the Holy Spirit, that you can use the Holy Spirit. My sister, that's false. The Holy Spirit uses you. You don't, you, you don't use the Holy Spirit. You're not the one that dictates what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit does that, my sister and brother. So we need to be very mindful of the power of the Holy Spirit. And we are not supposed to grieve the Holy Spirit of God, my sister and my brother. So we just need to be very mindful, be very mindful. So with that, my sister and brother, let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this message, Father God. I thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God. I thank you for my sister, my brother, that stopped by here today, Father God. You know our individual shortcomings, Father God. So, Father God, we lay all our burdens at your feet, Father God. We lay them down, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, for being such a mighty God that you sit high, but you look low, Father God. And you have already dispatched angels to answer our prayer. Father God, and we thank you, Father God, for being such a mighty God that you are here, that you have heard us. Father God, if we have said or done anything that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight, Father God, we ask you that you will wash us like the showers is flowing, pouring on Central Valley. We ask you to have that shower in our hearts to wash us, to purify us, to cleanse us, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, for hearing. We thank you for answering. And Father God, we ask you for the power that we need in these last days to stay focused, Father God, on you. We thank you, Father God, for hearing. We thank you for answering. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'll be there one second, one second. Okay, my sister, brother, birthday warrior here. Follow me on YouTube. And with that, have a super awesome day. So let us go with four hugs. My male guys here. Go ahead, go four. So one, two, three, one more, four. Love you. Talk to you soon. Hey, Connie, take care. I love you, sister. Love you guys. Take care.